Doing Falcon Lost on Heroic Mode can be fun, you know, once, given that you have the right setup and a cool group of friends to do it with. Doing Falcon Lost on Heroic as many times as I did, which I'm pretty sure rounds up to about 80 or 90 times since the launch of the 1.3 patch, that could very well be classified as uh, having a mental disorder or something in that ballpark. Unfortunately though, that is kind of required to get the quote-unquote perfect build in the division. And uh, I kind of wanted that perfect build. Luckily, after all those days of grinding and grinding and grinding, um, I've got something to show for it. I have completed what is in my eyes the Tanktician build of all the Tanktician builds out there. And um, I would actually be surprised if anyone in the entire game had a more optimized build than uh, I have right now. Seriously, it would impress me. Show me those pictures. Now, although this build mostly follows my best in slot gear guide that I created a little while ago, which by the way guys is still uh, about 98% accurate uh, as of the patch 1.3, um, a lot of people still wanted me to go in depth with the build that I am currently using. So if you hadn't figured it out by now, that is what I'm going to do today. Let's begin. The build that I still run with today is, as I mentioned, a Tanktician build. 4-piece Tactician's Authority and 2-piece Final Measure. You know, the build that I first popularized when I made a video about it at the start of the 1.2 patch, for which, by the way, many players still hate me because it arguably was the start of uh, the toughness trend that really started to hurt the PvP a lot. Hopefully the 20% damage increase will fix that a bit. But yeah, a lot of people tried out this build in combination with the Sticky Bomb, and in order to survive the Sticky Bomb, other players had to get the 2-piece Final Measure and spec a little bit more into Stamina. Thus, everybody lost out on a lot of potential damage, while at the same time the NPCs also got a lot more powerful. Thus, the result was is that it felt like that you were shooting rubber bullets regardless, unless you wanted to risk getting one-shotted by a random sticky. But what can I say, people? I'm sorry, I didn't know it was gonna be this bad. Now, before I go more in-depth on how you should play with this build and what you can do with it, uh, I want to go over each item individually and show you exactly how I put this build together. Basically, try to answer all your questions in this video. Just as last time, I will start with the gear first and after that I will talk about my weapons. The reason behind this is because I feel that uh, I deal a fairly low amount of damage, I don't really have a lot of firearms. And because of that, I can only unlock one of the talents on the weapon, uh, the one in the free slot. For that reason, it doesn't really matter what the other two roles are, or, you know, you don't have to get anything specific, and thus it's not as important to talk about. This, the first thing that I'm going to cover in this video, is my body armor piece. For the body armor, I'm using a final measure vest. It's the first one of the two-piece final measure that I'm wearing. I have actually been very fortunate with body armor pieces, as on paper, it is the hardest item to get a good roll for, simply because besides the main stat, it has two major attributes instead of one. But when I was playing on the 1st of July, I actually found three final measure vests while farming in the dark zone, and all of those had 750 or higher main stat. All of those also rolled with extra armor, so all I had to do was simply pick the best of the three and then roll Exotic Damage Resilience as the second major attribute. I sold the worst one of the three, but I still have the second one in my stash, just in case I ever accidentally deconstruct or sell my equipped one. Yeah, that's right, I don't really trust myself. I've made that mistake before. Not too fun. Now, other than the armor and the Exotic Damage Resilience, the piece also has increased skill experience and Ballistic Shield Health. Admittedly, the kill experience is pretty much useless for me because you do not get any underground experience for killing underground NPCs, and I am already Dark Zone rank 99. But uh, the Ballistic Shield health is actually a good thing, because it allows me to have a near maxed out shield even while I'm only sitting on 32k skill power. And yes, I do actually use the shield sometimes, but we'll get into that later. The two mods that I have on the body armor are both main stat stamina, but instead of the skill power that I said that you should always roll on the mods, I've actually rolled them with uh, exotic damage resilience. Now, that is not because I couldn't get my hands on stamina mods with skill power. As you can see in my inventory, I have plenty of very good ones sitting right there. But this is a choice that I purposely made so that my character can sit at the 90% exotic damage resilience cap, which is very helpful in the dark zone and in the new incursion. I figured that with all the skill power mods and the rolls on the backpack and the mask, which I'll, you know, I'll show you soon, my base skill power would actually sit around 37k, which, uh, which pretty much means that a lot of that would be wasted if I would be sitting uh, you know, at over 60% of my Tactician's Authority stacks. And since in PvE teammates kept my Tactician stacks up to 100% in a matter of seconds, 
Uh, and because the uptime of Tactician's Authority is pretty much 100%, I figured that with 32k skill power would be enough to max out on pretty much every skill while still being able to also have that 90% exotic damage resilience on top of it. That is why I'm rolling mods with exotic damage resilience. Next up we have the final measure knee pads, which together make up the two piece final measure giving me the extra 50% exotic damage resilience. Now, these two I got in the dark zone and with these two I got very lucky because one day I was playing and I found a few final measure knee pads in a row, just like that. As you might remember in my best in slot video guide I actually mentioned that you should probably roll armor in your knee pads if you have any trouble reaching the armor cap. But my armor rolls on uh, all my gear is actually high enough uh, so that I have reached the armor cap without the need of uh, extra armor on the knee pads here. Thus, once again, I went for the extra exotic damage resilience, which helped me to get to that 90% cap. For the minor attributes, I have a blind death resistance, disrupt resistance and scavenging. Now I know that again the minor and the skill attributes don't really matter, but I just find it crazy how I actually got a blind death resistance and disrupt resistance on the same piece, as those are exactly the status effects that a flashbang sticky applies. And as we all know, one of the best ways to shut down somebody that uses a lot of skills is to chain flashbangs on them so he cannot use his skills, you know, it disrupts them. Having these two resistances on the pads obviously doesn't make me immune to them, but they can still help out a lot if uh, people in the dark zone are trying to chain those. Scavenging is uh, admittedly kind of a wasted role though, I thought they said that they had plans to change this around a bit in the 1.3 patch back when the 1.1 patch dropped, uh, but so far I haven't really seen any major change, uh, so either it must have been stealth or they are still working on it. The skill attribute is uh, the turret health, which can actually be quite helpful since uh, the only time that I actually use a turret is when I'm playing PvP. And when I'm playing PvP I do not always have my tactician stacks up, so I will never really be capped out on all my skills. Having the turret be a bit stronger is actually not a bad thing in that situation. But moving on to the four piece tacticians, first up we have the backpack, that's the first piece in the four piece set that you might have figured it out. Uh, I got all my tactician pieces from uh, those Falcon Lost Heroic mode runs and unlike with the final measures uh, that I got by sheer luck, I actually worked really, really hard for these pieces, I already mentioned in the video how many runs I did. Um, the backpack has a 759 main stat stamina, just over 7300 skill power, it has extra ammo capacity, ballistic shield damage and the first 8 ally heal. All of those are good, but I'm especially happy with the ballistic shield damage because this is a statistic that doesn't skill up with skill power. And it kinda helps to make up for the one thing that I really lack, that is the damage. You will see that more of my items are rolled with this as well. But uh, as I said, we will get into that uh, later into the video. The gloves have 748 main stat stamina, critical hit chance, critical hit damage and LMG damage and also support station duration as a skill attribute. Um, all of these I'm pretty happy with because I actually play with an LMG as you will soon see. But I'm uh, pretty bummed out by the support station healing duration. There are two reasons for this. Uh, the first one is simply because the duration is kept at 30 seconds no matter what, unless you're using the immunizer. So this is most of the time a wasted statistic, even if you're using the healing station. And another reason I don't really like it is because I have a 100% uptime of this skill regardless. The cooldown can be as short as 20 seconds without any skill haste. But the duration of these stations, they are at least 24 seconds or 30 seconds if you're not playing with the immunizer. So this is completely wasted. The holster is a 3 stat holster with armor and again the ballistic shield damage. It has very high stamina and electronics, it is just that the firearms roll is a bit too low. And then last up on the list we have the Tactician's Authority Mask with 748 main stat stamina, just over 5300 skill power, enemy armor damage and support station healing speed. Now together all these 6 pieces make up my 4 piece tacticians and my 2 piece final measure set. However, these aren't the only gear items that I carry with me. I actually have 2 separate restock sets as well that I use every time I get ammo and you know I, I sell all my items and stuff like that. The first gear set is specifically made to maximize ammo capacity, very helpful in the dark zone for example. To start off I have a tactician's vest with 3 mod slots from before the 1.1 patch. Uh, it has 51% ammo capacity and then in all 3 of the mod slots I have a 10% ammo capacity mod which will increase, you know, that it will increase it even further. In addition to that I also have a Lone Star mask and Lone Star knee pads for another 100% ammo capacity. 
And in each of those, I also have a mod slot with that same 10% ammo capacity mod. And then to round it up, on top of that, I'm also using a police backpack, giving me another 75% extra ammo. This in total gives me 276% extra ammo, resulting in over 2000 LMG and SMG ammo with just a single restock. Again, it's very useful for the underground if you're using the waste not want not directive or in the dark zone if you're looking to make efficient runs without having to restock very often. Then for the medkits, I actually swap gear once more and open the box for a second time, only this time I am wearing two-piece alpha bridge equipped with the paramedic backpack as well, resulting in a total of nine medkits on top of the extra ammo that I already had. This whole gear switching thing is pretty annoying and it's a lot of effort for just restocking. It probably takes me around 20 seconds to restock instead of just pressing the button to open the box, but I actually think it's worth it because you have to restock a lot less often. And that's, that pretty much sums up all the gear that I use. Um, it's, it's quite a whole list, isn't it? Um, but with that out of the way, I think it's time to talk about the weapons that I run with. Again, they are less important to the whole build. They are not as crucial to have, but I'm guessing that this is still something that is worth talking about because there is a lot to talk about. It probably shouldn't come as a surprise to you that I'm actually using the L86 light machine gun. With the high base damage that this weapon has and the 30% extra damage increase to targets out of cover that easily puts this weapon on par and even makes it stronger than most of the automatic weapons in the game, including SMGs. A lot of people still argue that SMGs are actually the strongest automatic weapons because of their base critical hit damage and I, I'm not gonna tell you that they're not good, but if you can consistently land headshots the LMG actually out damages most of those simply because of the native headshot multiplier. I don't see a lot of other YouTubers talking about this, but every gun category has a, a different multiplier for doing headshots. For example, the SMGs have the lowest headshot multipliers in the game. They only do 50% extra damage for each headshot that you land. The assault rifles already are a lot higher, they do 75% extra damage for headshots. Shotguns do 80% more damage. Snipers do 120% extra headshot damage, plus the value that is given as a bonus, so that usually comes down to about 270% or something. Um, but the LMGs and the pistols are actually in between there, both doing 100% extra damage when landing a headshot. So apart from the sniper, the LMG tops every weapon class if you consistently land those headshots. Especially now with the 30% damage bonus for targets out of cover. And you might say that it is hard uh, to land headshots for PvP, but the LMG is actually so accurate that pointing the cursor on top of the enemy's heads and shooting away will connect almost every bullet. Uh, using a pulse and a smart cover with my build, which is one of the skill combinations that I run with nowadays, um, we will get into that soon, but with those two skills I can actually damage people and hit them for a lot harder than I can with most other weapons in the game. Even though my on-sheet DPS is quite low, I'm still critting headshots on players for over 14k damage per hit. I do want to mention though that my L86 does have Brutal in the free slot. Obviously I can only unlock one talent and Brutal definitely helps me if I'm going for those headshots. So that is uh, an added bonus that comes with that. One disclaimer though, this build still doesn't work for solo. If a four man group comes up to hunt you down and you decide to fight instead of running, um, you will still die most of the time unless they are poorly geared up or bad at the game to begin with. Most of the time you can take out maybe one before you go down, but I just want to say that no build is ever good enough to fight off four players that are geared just as you are and also of equal skill. If you want to go for those skills though, make sure you have the smart cover buff and uh, if you don't, do not trade fire because four people will out damage you no matter what. Then the pistol that I use that is obviously the new X45 as it is crazy strong, way better than any other pistol in the game. It actually is on par with some of the primary weapons in the game. Now I don't actually use this pistol though, uh, unless I'm playing with the ballistic shield, which I guess we will get into that right now, uh, because since the sticky bombs are generally countered hard by people that run Final Master, you know that whole sticky bomb meta is kind of over, everybody has adapted by having a higher stamina in you know, the two-piece Final Measure. Um, I've kind of been looking into other combinations of skill sets. Uh, some are better than others, some miserably filled, uh, but I basically have a few setups that are kind of good. Uh, and the first one is being a full tank tactician. This set requires you to run the ballistic shield with uh, the mod that you prefer. I actually prefer the assault shield because yes, it has the least amount of health, but it also provides you with the most buffs to yourself. 
such as the uh, increased accuracy, a faster reload speed, a chance to knock back NPCs, and most importantly, a 20% buff to your damage. As I mentioned earlier, two of my gear set items actually also have that added ballistic shield damage, so count those together and that equals to 26% extra damage. And uh, combined with the rest, this is actually a very significant damage buff. The second skill that you're going to want to run this with is uh, either going to be the first 8, or if you feel like you can uh, rely on your teammates to heal you up, you can go with the flashbang sticky bomb for some reliable crowd control. For now though, I would uh, avoid using this setup in particular simply because of the fact that the ballistic shield is very heavily bugged. It bugs out at the most random times causing you to not being able to put the shield back up, throw grenades, use other skills or even do damage with your weapons. And you die almost every time because of it. When this gets fixed however, I will be the first one to run it. The next setup that I have is actually the most difficult to play uh, and the one that's most prone to errors as it will require you to run a flashbang and a turret leaving you with no option to heal yourself other than the medkits. Um, this is kind of an in and out build. Uh, you basically run up to your enemies, you drop a turret in the middle, you drop a flashbang so that they cannot use their skills and maybe you drop a grenade or two and then you run back to your squad which can then heal you up. They, on the other hand, are required to use triage so that you can enter and exit their heals multiple times uh, and then within a few seconds you will have your turret and your flashbang sticky back up. Then when you're fully healed, you run back in, you drop your cooldowns, you go back out, you rinse and repeat. This will allow you to almost permanently disrupt them and dish out stuns so you can set up the kills for the damage dealer in your team. With 700k toughness and access to 9 medkits, you should be able to do fine in most situations, but be aware that they can also flashbang or stun you when you're going in and if you're not close to your teammates at that moment, um, you know, things can get dicey really, really fast. The next setup is actually quite commonly used where you basically run uh, as a buffer with the smart cover and the pulse and provide insane damage buffs to you, but also to your team. I don't actually think this needs much explaining. It's very useful for PvE, almost mandatory in the endgame PvE. It's not as useful for PvP if the enemies run with a conceal, but you can still do a pretty damn good job. In addition to that, you can also run the smart cover with uh, the first 8 and you will just never die. I have been doing this a lot lately. It's actually the build that is the most forgiving in terms of positioning and allows you to take a crazy amount of damage before going down, as well as providing good heals and buffs for your teammates. And on last up, you can still run with uh, the first 8 and the sticky bomb for the good old stereotype tacticians that everybody has come to hate so much. Um, but it is again easily countered by a two-piece final measure and high stamina players. The talents that you want to go with uh, obviously depend a little bit on your skills. I think that critical safe is the only one that is really a must have. And if you're running with a first aid setup, then uh, you can add triage to that must have list as well. But the rest, that's really up to you. For example, when I'm running around with a shock turret, I like to run fear tactics. But then when I'm using a sticky bomb, um, I like to use chain reaction. So yes, guys, at the end of the day, I am not the one dealing the damage numbers. I'm not the one getting those 1 million crits. And I will never do as much damage as somebody with a 4-piece sentry build or a 5-piece sentry build. But that isn't to say that I am a useless running wall. With this build you can hard carry people in the incursions, in the dark zone or in any other endgame PvE activity. Need somebody running the bombs on Falcon Lost? Well, that's me. Need somebody taking the caches on Clear Sky and putting them safely into those boxes? You know, here I am. Uh, need somebody to sit in the middle of the flamers on Dragon's Nest so that you can shoot them from a distance without being aggroed? Well, here's the guy, that's also me. Uh, in the dark zone you can use smart cover to farm faster, you can cut ropes and take supply drops right under someone else's face, putting you in the center of attention uh, even without the risk of dying if you pop a survivor link. Seriously, I've had people not being able to deny the rope cut because they had uh, to reload their weapon and you know, they literally couldn't shoot at me anymore because they had no ammo. That is how tanky you can get. Now, one pro tip right here to avoid somebody doing that. If you want to stop someone taking a supply drop or cutting the rope, all you have to do is drop a frag grenade under them. It will knock them out of the animation no matter how tanky they are. Because as much as I like cutting ropes, I also hate to see you guys being mad over losing that god world item. So use frag grenades, they will deny any of those interactions. And yeah, that's pretty much what I have to share about my build as of today. I know this video was uh, a little lengthier, which uh, I usually try to avoid as much as I can, but I 
really didn't want to leave out any of the details and uh, really show you what this build is all about and what you can do with it. But I guess that is pretty much all that I have to share with you right now. As always, I hope I will see you guys later, or like they say, in the Netherlands. See you later!